people use lamb rockers, time to pull on your platform boots and come out of the closet because, after a 12-year absence, squeeze are back on the teenage rampage. <laughs> It's not on, mine is though. Oh well. Uh, that's because two of them wouldn't. Do you know what our names are? Dave, Brian, Mick and Andy. Ah, Brian. Two of them wouldn't someone's done a bloody homework. <laughs> oh, that's name, isn't it? You got a yeah, well, you, if you look on the front cover of Sergeant Pepper, <laughs> you notice that two of them are flying and two of them... like that, yeah. That's because two of them wouldn't share it with the other two. <laughs> you got one up your jumper, have you? <laughs> well, he stuffed something up there. They're only expecting to have you see. No, it's just so you don't have to wait for the things. Shoot it out there, then. <laughs> Oh, well, fire then, shall we? Fire when ready. Let's see if they've got the other copy to it. Who do you want to start with, Steve? Ready, Simon? Uh-huh. Get on with it. Just got to wait for this guy to stop. Oh. Mm. He knows we're talking about him. You don't wonder how. <laughs> Keep that one for yourself. <laughs> next week's record month. Well, next month's record, record collector, yeah. Okay. Okay. Next week's record, month. We're ready. Let's start with Mick. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, hang on, you say that. Right. Okay. What are you doing here today? What am I doing here today? <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you all sitting together on the sofa? Uh, because it's the first time we've been mm, yeah. together in front of a camera for 11 years, something like that. So I thought I might as well turn up since that I'm 25% of the band, as it were. Andy, why have you all decided to get together after 12 years apart? Um, that's, that's, that's quite a difficult question. Um, we've, we've thought about this several times before, but um, I suppose it's not until this particular time that there's got to be a demand for something, and um, I think that uh, the time has never been better for us to think about uh, getting ourselves back together and making some new records and getting back out on the road, so... Um, just from the point of view of um, public demand and um, having someone behind us now who's trying to organise this, because we, in the past, have been totally unmanageable, but hopefully in the future it'll be... it'll be okay. Brian, did you all keep in touch when you weren't together the 12 years that you split up? Uh, not really every day of the week, um, but we haven't lost contact uh, for any length of time. Any of us. And Steve, what about, what about the fans? Have you had any kept in touch with the fans over the 12 years? Yeah, I've got my own fan club in Los Angeles. <laughs> I'm serious, I have. I didn't start it, somebody did. But yeah, I'm sort of. Can really. I join? <laughs> What's her name again? <laughs> 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 and um, if we all go through you individually, if we start with Steve, what, what have you actually been doing for the past 12 years? Uh, I've been involved in the music business in LA and New York, uh, with bands, writing, stuff, things. Which bands? Never got anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and what those bands are is not <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, you know, writing partners. I should be looking at the camera, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, writing partnerships and just getting some music together. And one day I'll sell it. <laughs> How about you, Brian? Yes? What have you been doing for the past 12 years? A uh, bit of everything, really. The recording, quite a bit, sort of live, with uh, three guys I know. Quite a few gigs, and just basically, um, 
surviving? <laughs> um, well, basically the same as the others. I mean, just bits and pieces, session work. Um, I've worked with Andy on a few projects as a musician. Um, but, um, I don't know, no great shakes like the sweet were. I think it's one of the things, once you've done it worldwide successfully, it's, you know, you tend to set your sights a little bit higher. I mean, once you've been there and had a taste of all that and done it correctly, it's difficult to uh, forge your head another, you know, and, and be as serious about it. Um, I've had a little bit of success as a producer and written a few things. Mick and I, as he said earlier, have um, worked on projects as musicians, backing vocalists, um, got a few bands, uh, I don't know, who can I mention? Bands like Breathe, you know, we did the backing vocals for them and um, most of my success has been abroad. It's not... <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> What have we done now? Yeah. <laughs> um, most of it's been on the continent, not not in England. Um, but um, as Mick just said, there's, there's nothing, however much success you maybe experience on your own, there's still nothing to compete with what we had when we were all together. So, you know. We spent 90% of our money on wine, women and song, and the rest we spent foolishly. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, because it's, um, maybe you can carry on Mick on that theme, what was it like in the heyday? Was it really good? Um, <clears throat> what do you mean in England or the overall picture? Worldwide overall. Um, it was a little bit different in England because I suppose we were lumped into that teeny bop glam rock situation, but um, the rest of the world it was, I know, it was more like a job, it was, it was a good job, I mean it's, it was just very, very, we were very lucky to be able to play the kind of music that uh, we wanted to play and be successful and tour in a, in a rock arena. Um, I suppose it was more, yeah, I mean, you, you, the more successful you become, the more business-like you become about it all. So, Brian, do you keep up on current music? Do you know anything about current music like Acid House, Stone Roses, things like that? What do you think of modern bands? Well, I know about Acid House, yeah, and um, you know, I've been to a couple of... Uh, I don't really know what they're called, you know, they're not gigs as, as I remember them, you know, uh, what I know about it, I'm not really interested, <laughs> it's not sort of music to me, nothing what I call music, or Andy's, rock. Andy's got a comment here. Yeah, there's a funny little coincidence, uh, again, sorry. yeah, there's a little coincidence here that we share the same agent as the Stone Roses, <laughs> so, um, you know, I've come across them quite a bit, you know, they're a, uh, they're quite a phenomena at the moment, aren't they? Mm. I can't really um, seriously listen to anything. I mean, I haven't watched Top of the Pops for 18 months. I can't listen to, to music, in, if that's what you want to call it, in England anymore. I mean, it's all... And the thing is, I mean, when you know it's all put together. You know, I mean, but thankfully, I mean, at least the public are, are beginning to catch on to that now. Yeah, I think we're going to get Jive Bunny to write the next single, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, mean, I think, yeah, <laughs> anything. <laughs> What's the advance? <laughs> if you go back to um, Steve, and what do you think about all the bands that Sweet have influenced? Oh, well, I meet them every now and then, you know, and it's like, um, they go, you know, they shake your hand and go, I, just, I can't tell you what an influence you've been on me, and you go, really? Because you know. <laughs> Send me a check. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Who particularly would you be talking about in that Def Leppard. A lot of bands that you wouldn't have heard of over here that I can't remember the name of. Billy so. Idol's uh, Poison. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's nice to know that you did influence people, even though you didn't realise you were doing it at the time. But, um, yeah, it's, as I say, it's nice. I, I think individually, you know, we've met a lot of them that are shared separate times, you know. And it covers a hell of a lot of groups. I know for that. Do you think there's more groups than actually than that's actually been acknowledged? I think so, yeah. Um, I actually went to a Motley Crew gig um, back in the last year, and I could not believe the intro to their set. We used to open with a, a theme written by David Rose, uh, the stripper, 
and then it went into a track called Hellraiser. Well, they had the stripper going into Kickstart My Heart, which has got exactly the same guitar riff as Hellraiser. So it's like um, almost 20 years later, Motley Crue are sweet. It was like it was like watching us, you know. Well, I do say it's, uh, <coughs> it's very um, flattering, I suppose. Almost flattery, but uh, I don't know. I don't think it's got to the point where it's gone beyond the mark of respect yet. No. I mean. Not like Robert Plant said, but about some of those Zeppelin things. Well, that's right. Right. If it ever does, then. But um, it's nice to know that. Uh, I mean, we were just striving to the best of our ability to be musicians and make good records. And uh, it's nice to know that um, those records still still stand up and did mean something. I can think of two bands that spring to mind. Uh, recently, I saw Skid Row. And I saw them backstage afterwards, and another band I went to see, both uh, was Europe, and both bands I went to see out of interest to see what they were like, you know. That was all, that was the only reason I went, but meeting them backstage, you know, I was just as surprised as anybody else at the, you know, the impression they had of Sweet, you know, and the, they were, their attitude towards it, you know, I was quite um, taken by it. What about a quote that cropped up recently that you might not know about, that Bono from U2 said that he'd like U2 to be more a singles band like Sweet was? No, I haven't, I haven't, no, I've not come across that, that one. That surprised me though, because Mm. As Ryan said, I mean, there are, there are so many bands that, um, I mean, I, I just the other day bumped into uh, a guitarist from Mama's Boys, and uh, he said to me, oh, he's thinking of covering uh, Love Is Like Oxygen. Well, it's not an easy thing. Sweet records have been covered, but there have, there have not been any hits so far, because th those early records, they're hard to better, and I think that's... Um, the hardest thing in the world is to make the definitive three chord pop record and when it comes off it comes off mm. and you can be a million miles away with the same song if you just haven't got the ingredients right and the four of us happen to get you know it's like um, mixing a cake you know you can be way off or you can be right on and obviously we were at yeah, the time once you get the structure right that's, that's the secret of it. I don't know if you're saying the right thing by saying all of this because, you know, being as we are now, we're competing with ourselves. Cause we've got to try and be better than we were before. Yeah. So we're all in the same boat. The ones that, you know, are getting things from us as we were. And what we're going to come up with to come back to be better than we were. I was going to say, um, a lot of the people that you've quoted have been like quite hard rock, but there's pop bands and I don't know whether you've heard of them, people like um, Boys Wonder and Guru Josh and, and Baby Ford and Transvision Band that are more pop bands, yeah. but all the people you talk about are actually <coughs> rock bands. Do you think you're a pop or a rock band? <coughs> yes. well, well, going back to the early 70s, you've got... Sorry, can we do that again? Mm. Going back to the early 70s. Uh, no. <laughs> going back to the early 70s, what... I forgot what I was going to say now, anyway. Going, yeah, going back to the early 70s, it's, um, it's very difficult to actually think of what was pop and what is rock, because what was considered pop then is now hard rock now. Um, Hellraiser was quite a, you know, just a, a good pop song, but it's considered almost heavy metal now. So I think it's, it was the playing from the band that, that, I mean, we did actually put our stamp of identity on those records. Um, Plus the fact that some quite a few of those records were purpose built for the band. There is another difficulty when you when you get a band trying to cover a sweet record because it was pur they were purpose built for the band. It's, it doesn't really translate sometimes. Plus the fact that the playing and the, the I mean the vocals are pretty high as well, which they all seem to have difficulties with. <laughs> Brian, going back to what, you, what you've just said, you said you're competing with yourselves. How are you going to compete with yourselves? What's your new material going to be like? Um, we've got a, a pretty good idea, but until it's done and finished, you know, I don't want to really comment because the person put it in there. <laughs> so let's wait and see. But you're looking forward to it, you're all... Uh... Oh, yeah. Trying to retain a little modesty until it's completed. <laughs> yeah. How do you think people are going to react? 
Well, if we come up with the right product, which I'm sure we will, I think it'll be phenomenal. Because a lot of people have waited a long time for this. I mean, it's every three to six months over the past eight or nine years, somebody's come up with a, an idea to get us all together. And it was just a matter of getting the four to agree at the same moment in time. And, of course, but, you know, picking you at the right kind of time. And I think it's the time is, is right now. I think it'll be great. What do you think about people like Gary Glitter who've tried to carry on all this time? Well, he has carried on, isn't he? I mean, I take my hat off to uh, to him. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, it's great for him. I think we managed to um, just keep apart from a lot of other things that were going on in that period. I know that people tend to um, jumble it all up. But it's only only here in England, um, you know, the, the success that we had in Scandinavia, America, Germany. We've been, we're very lucky I suppose, but we've been earmarked to one side as in the bag with other bands like, in Germany for example, Deep Purple, Sweet. You know, they were distinctive era bands. But in England, you know, we still seem to get that if there's going to be a greatest hits of the 70s, then Sweet, Slade, everyone's going to be on that, if you see what I mean. Whereas in Germany, it would be a greatest hits of Sweet, for example, and we wouldn't tend to get boxed up like that. Well, I think uh, that by virtue of the fact that we have had a lot of bands covering a lot of uh, material, kind of sets us a little bit apart anyway. Compliment, really. Hopefully. Yeah. Great, thanks. Pleasure. Before you all move, we've got to do the fun bit now. Oh, yes. IDs. Have you done these? Where you'll oh, sit there and go. I hate them. Yeah. Look out for the show next wrong. week on. Da, 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 da. I always okay. get these wrong. Okay. Right, I'm a. My name is. What do you want, individuals or? Mm. Yeah, oh, no, this is sweet. You're watching first, Simple It'll be. Yeah. If we all do it together, it'll be. Oh, well, I'll go first. Well, <laughs> do one. You can either do it together or just one person. Oh, no, we're not doing it in harmony. No, I don't think that's. Uh, <laughs> but you do it first, and then I'll do one, and then you can do one. And Only once one. Four. Oh, do you want one each? No, no just, just one. one. Oh, they're all together. Oh, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. This is Sweet, and you're watching the power station. Correct. And what Jordan, you your money. Enjoy. Oh, the, video, <laughs> the video that you've done. You know the ballroom lit. Oh, so, oh, 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 oh. And, and, hey. and I was a teenager. My youth club used to go every week. Oh, really? So I was slaying T-Rex. Everybody would be good. Wow. <laughs> there's, a, there's one of the... Um, yeah, we the bus pulling alongside and no, leaning in the back seat really and these heads going yeah. up and, <laughs> and it's like... Do we really turn? <laughs> A shy block. It's going to have to be fucking wide as well, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how fucking wide it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell well, the future whether you're going to be doing any gigs or not. Well, <laughs> you can't speak in, the, in the future. Uh, oh, oh, we probably will be. You've got 14 days at Wembley uh, already starting. <laughs> I think the product uh, you know, is the essential thing before the live. Right. Because the live will then. No, you can all support just, the product. Yeah. Just just look at me and not say anything, so you've got to look at that. <laughs> I'm totally interested in you. I'm totally enthralled in what I'm saying. Um, I'm not we're, and we're anything. intelligent. Yeah, you're just quite thinking. She's asking a really difficult question. I'm going to have to think about this one mm. and what I'm going to say. Mm.